today i'll be covering something on compensation framework and um, general terminology what we have uh, in advanced compensation i think eligibility rules you know <clears throat> will be part of this uh, you know, session but i think eligibility rules when we have uh, created um, uh, in our core compensation we have created uh, multiple eligibility rules i think that could be the same but i think you know we'll be creating uh, one or more um, eligibility rules but the same steps what we have created will be the same and we'll see how these rules can be utilized in our further sessions with merit plans and you know other uh, things and all. so we'll just start with compensation framework today and uh, discuss something on the terminologies that we have in regards to advanced compensation If you're part of compensation team and if you're a compensation administrator or compensation partner or auditor so you'll have a kind of responsibility to perform um, um, core uh, compensation and advanced compensation configurations to deploy those things into workday uh, environment and once you deploy you know you will continue to maintain the workday compensation structure so uh, a strong um, understanding of how compensation is designed and managed is actually required here so the compensation structure uh, is actually broken into two components one is uh, core compensation core compensation the other one is advanced compensation <clears throat> so core compensation whatever we have seen grades grade profiles eligibility rules packages and uh, you know uh, defining um, uh, compensation plans and all will be part of core compensation and advanced advanced compensation will um, include um, merit bonus stock plans as well as you know their related process okay so that you know we will be seeing um, in advanced compensation there are two structures to uh, kind of you know um, breakouts uh, in compensation one is core compensation the other one is advanced compensation okay and uh, when you talk specifically about um, advanced compensation <clears throat> okay so compensation uh, generally you know, in workday uh, which is typically used to track uh, the compensation at both enterprise uh, uh, wide and also individual worker level so at organization level you will be able to track all the um, compensation review process you will be assigning compensation pools to individual manager whatever you know as part of review review process whatever compensation range that they wanted to uh, you know a lot to employees between the pool that they are assigned with so they will be taking a decision on that one and also at individual worker level you know, they can actually you know take decision related to compensation so workday compensation is broken into as i said um, the core and advanced and uh, the overall compensation structure um, um, that consists of a compensation grades plans uh, which are actually grouped together together to make a compensation package and advanced compensation is typically you know um, uh, it encompass, encompasses all the configuration and um, the processing of uh, stocks bonus and merit plans and um, so to just you know give you a kind of a brief um, a flow chart of a compensation package <clears throat> the structure and how it can be built grades grade profiles similarly plans and and from here you know we'll be getting into compensation elements where you know you'll be seeing something related to advanced compensation like compensation matrix so we'll be discussing in detail about uh, these components what is compensation matrix this is actually the first step of advanced compensation and um, waiting periods 
So have you heard uh, anything um, uh, compensation matrix, waiting periods and time proration? Have you heard um, these terms in your uh, current responsibility? I think I have heard waiting period. I have heard uh, time proration, right? Compensation okay. matrix, is it same as performance matrix that, uh, for example, ratings, if you get uh, net exceed is that the same or different no 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 compensation okay. matrix is generally used by stock bonus and merit plans to determine an employee pay increase based on um, the, you know so what you said will actually you know partially it will relate but it will not uh, you know uh, relate complete in you know, a compensation uh, compensation but uh, it will um, relate to stock bonus and market uh, merit plans uh, depends upon you know uh, the employee performance rating Tension rating, eligibility rule, salary range, uh, and other criteria. So all these things, you know, will be uh, part of uh, the compensation matrix actually. Okay, okay. So which it includes per basically performance management. That's what you are telling me. Yeah, in, in one of the you know um, one of the part I can say even performance okay. rating will also include and also retention rating and the eligibility rule, salary range of quartile and other criteria uh, based on your business needs actually. So it's a mixture of uh, you know these things which are used in uh, stock bonus and merit plans actually. And the time proration and. Uh, Company funding scorecard. All these are you know components of advanced compensation. Plan modify scorecard mm -hmm. and um, rounding rule. All these are you know waiting period, compensation matrix, time progression funding scorecard modified scorecard and rounding rules are actually you know elements of um, advanced compensation actually okay so we'll discuss in detail about each of this component <clears throat> and we'll generally talk about uh, general terminologies that we'll be frequently hearing in advanced compensation so so compensation matrix, I think, you know, we discussed, we just discussed, uh, it's nothing but uh, uh, based on your performance rating, your, um, uh, you know, this uh, retention rating and uh, the eligibility rules that are defined in core compensation and um, salary range and um, any other criteria which are typically used in stock plan, bonus plan and merit plan actually. Okay. And similarly, waiting period. <coughs> So waiting period is nothing but, uh, you know, um, this is also used by bonus and merit plan to determine when employee is eligible to participate in the plan actually. So determines when employee is actually eligible, <coughs> is actually eligible to participate in the plan actually. So probably whatever you know, I'll be noting here. I'll share this uh, information to you. For, so instead okay. of you know, uh, documenting um, step by step, I think you know this will work for you, right? I ju yeah, yeah, just yeah. take it as a reference, actually. Perfect. Yeah. So the waiting period is just uh, just a kind of you know the, the kind of um, eligibility criteria where you know, it specifies when employee will be eligible to participate in the plan, actually. Uh and similarly when you talk about a time proration uh, you know there will be multiple uh, rules here actually so a set of rules you know that determines the proration of the pool uh, or you know kind of target amounts employee receive in merit uh, process or you know bonus process i can say uh, i can say a set of rules that are used to determine the 
Or you should remind um, when an employee when employee will be eligible eligible to receive uh, a merit and uh, the bonus uh, uh, process actually okay and um, scorecards you know um, whatever another you know, funding scorecard and the modified scorecard will typically call it as a scorecard uh, scorecard is nothing but a kind of uh, which lists um, uh, you know goals weights used to evaluate in you know, a company performance individual performance or in you know, a divisional performance as part of in you know, a bonus process so this actually um, so all this um, uh, Funding uh, company funding scorecard and plan mode for scorecard, which actually you know what determines and <clears throat> uh, determines our evaluate. I can say evaluates company and individual worker performance. <clears throat> As part of you know review process or you know you can say merit process as part of uh, merit process so scorecard um, is nothing but you know, which evaluates this one both in you know, a company funding scorecard and plan modify scorecard actually each one of you know one one evaluates um, company performance and the other one will evaluate uh, individual worker performance as part of merit process so when you say something you know scorecard configuration it typically define uh, that actually evaluates um, the performance of company and performance of an employee as part of merit process actually typically you know you'll be doing um, that process you know when you actually uh, going for actually merit pro merit kind of you know configuration part and all and rounding rule is nothing but you know you will be actually uh, uh, rounding um, the figure actually whatever you know the pool that you are assigning to uh, organization or um, uh, the pool that you are actually defining for individual uh, team member and all so you will be rounding that particular component and uh, uh, you know get that uh, component assigned to employee when you're actually configuring a uh, uh, compensation part and all so so advanced compensation is actually uh, comprises with uh, you know, uh, uh, three general components which we have discussed one is a um, stock plan Stock plan bonus plan the one is merit plan so on the stock plan you will see a kind of compensation matrix comp matrix and a bonus plan you'll see all the components like comp matrix waiting period scorecard both uh, company funding scorecard and plan modified scorecard I will just specify scorecard when I say scorecard it's nothing but both um, company funding scorecard and uh, mat, uh, plan modified scorecard and the last one is time proration 
So bonus plan will be a mixture of all these things. Proration. And when coming to merit plan, so here you know only I will see comp matrix. and a waiting period yeah amit how would you define comp matrix if you have to write uh comp matrix is nothing but you know which we said like um, uh mixture of uh, you know what you say uh, stock plans merit plans um, which are uh, actually used in this and um, uh, we can determine when employees pay increase um, which is based on overall performance rating of an employee and a retention rating and the eligibility rule you know that we are defining uh, in that matrix where you know the salary range uh, will be uh, you know general criteria so in that way you can define a compensation matrix so we can say like uh, it's nothing but a kind of uh, you know uh, which is used by stock plan uh, bonus plan and merit plan which will be helpful to determine an employee's pay increase based on their overall uh, performance rating uh, and the retention rating and also the eligibility rule that you will be defining actually okay. so in that way you, know, you can define actually <clears throat> whenever you are actually performing a kind of configuration uh, you'll be considering overall performance rating and um, retention rating of the employee and also uh, whatever an eligibility rules that are configured um, in um, core compensation right so those are all the things you know that will be coming under uh, compensation matrix but typically used by stock bonus and merit plan only these three plans okay used by stock merit and bonus to determine workers workers pay increase based on uh, based on performance rating rating and eligibility rules that's how you know typically uh, you know go define your compensation matrix actually and once you have your um, uh, everything um, uh, configured compensation can be actually assigned to an employee individually or as part of you know mass event such as uh, merit or bonus plan and um, uh, generally to establish a kind of eligibility for com um, the components of compensation or to automate uh, the assignments of these components to worker compensation um, you can create eligibility rule you can uh, create one compensation eligibility rule, whatever you know we have created uh, in our you know core compensation configuration you can create that eligibility rule which actually indicates which workers are actually eligible for which compensation components so that's how we you know we have seen right uh, so when we're actually configuring um, core compensation so we have defined a compensation package in which uh, we have defined an eligibility rule this compensation package should be applicable for specific supervisory organization or uh, uh, people from uh, us with the uh, uh, you know 
a few management levels we have defined some kind of eligibility rules right similarly you will be actually defining those eligibility rules actually you will be defining eligibility rules which actually uh, defines which workers are eligible for which compensation component and that's how you know you typically manage um, with eligibility rules and um, uh, in other way we can say like uh, default compensation can be associated directly to position management or job management um, supervisor organization <clears throat> so whatever you know when you're actually hiring um, an employee um, the, you'll be actually uh, pro, you'll be actually proposing compensation for that employee right uh, so the employee is nothing but who is part of the supervisor organization okay so you're aware you're aware of this right um, so supervisor organization when hiring an employee will be proposing a compensation and um, that compensation will be associated directly to the uh, supervisor organization <clears throat> So uh, probably if you are compensation administrator or compensation partner, you will be getting a kind of uh, whenever employee is getting hired, you will be getting a kind of uh, notification to propose a compensation actually. To propose a compensation, you will be getting a kind of uh, notification that will allow you to configure that particular compensation package to that employee. So uh, default compensation can be associated directly to position management or job management supervisor organization so uh, we can say in that way and uh, by using compensation eligibility rule um, the compensation components can default into employee compensation during a staffing event such as hire transfer uh, promotion demotion and whatever rules you know can also be um, used by default population eligibility rule for a merit plan and bonus plan um, which is actually you know different than a default target okay that's how you know you typically manage when you're actually uh, creating eligibility rules and um, there are few things here uh, you know that you need to actually um, understand the steps of um, establishing compensation structure for your company when you're actually uh, including uh, uh, workday advanced compensation so we'll discuss in detail about uh, those steps actually so th those steps are actually important for you when you actually go for uh, 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 defining a compensation structure for your company. <clears throat> Com structure and organization. First one. Okay, so the first step that you'll be actually doing is you will define frequencies um, the, which are actually used to used in compensation payroll calculation. Okay, define frequencies which are typically typically used in um, the your uh, uh, merit calculations and uh, payroll calculations actually yeah. okay and uh, the second step you know that we'll be performing is we'll define a compensation element that makes the link between compensation and payroll earnings and um, uh, so the compensation payroll are interlinked right uh, whatever you know that we are performing in compensation ultimately that has to go to payroll actually right uh, so that link you know will be actually uh, you know um, uh, defining here as part of uh, a compensation structure defining actually so define um, define element define a comp element which will link Link comp compensation and payroll payroll which will help in communicating communicating comp data. 
that's how you know you typically the um, other steps you know that you'll be performing you'll be creating an element where you know you'll be linking uh, both the compensation payroll so whatever you know you are defining in uh, advanced compensation that will be flowed to your uh, payroll actually and once you have uh, everything you know flowing to payroll you'll be uh, you know you'll be creating a compensation basis to establish one or more definitions of estimated earnings uh, for different uh, populations of employees uh, different uh, will be having different levels of uh, employees right uh, so each of the employee will be having um, uh, each level of the employee based on uh, the compensation policy internally um, so, you know Top level uh, may have in a different earning uh, uh, components like uh, you know performance uh, plan, performance plan stock, and uh, restricted stock plan, and uh, long term incentive plans based on you know job grades and job levels. And each of the level will be having uh, different pay components rather than you know following the same kind of a compensation structure throughout the organization. Most of the organizations you know based on job grade based on um, the level of the employee few you know compensation components will be assigned to that employee so as part of our third third step you know what we'll be doing we'll be creating a compensation um, uh, basis that establishes uh, you know one or more definitions of uh, estimated earnings for different uh, populations of employees one or more uh, uh, definitions of earnings for a different uh, group of uh, employees so once you define um, the different groups for uh, uh, defining uh, earnings and all the fourth step you know you'll be defining a compensation eligibility rule uh, which will be determining the group of employees who are eligible for different compensation plans actually so this is uh, i think uh, this one we have done in regular compensation so generally you know we'll be creating an eligibility rule that eligibility rule will be determining the groups of employees who are actually eligible for uh, different compensation plans actually so we have done this configuration actually so when you are defining a compensation structure this will act this will also uh, this will also play a kind of you know important role um, in defining uh, in a people uh, uh, in defining eligibility rules that will specify this group of employees are actually eligible to get this compensation plan kind of a rule you know will be defining actually so fourth step you know will be defining eligibility rule define eligibility rule that will allow you allow you to generate compensation plan for specific group of team members which we'll typically do in uh, eligibility rule so eligibility rule is nothing but uh, which um, assigns uh, compensation package or compensation plan or compensation grade to specific uh, you know group of people based on the eligibility rule that we would have defined based on location based on supervisor organization based on management level anything you know we can specify in that eligibility rule that will allocate the compensation uh, component whether it can be plan it can be grade it can be package so any of these thing you know can be assigned assigned to a specific group of uh, people through eligibility rule actually so that will be one of the important step uh, when you're actually defining compensation structure and once you have that uh, eligibility rule i think uh, you know uh, you need to uh, have the flow whatever we discussed in regular compensation right once you have the eligibility rule you need to define the compensation grades and then you know define compensation plans and then as part of the last step add these plans and uh, uh, you know add plans uh, grades and bundle them together into compensation package so 
this is uh, you know all of our core compensation um, steps you know will be coming into picture here so once you define eligibility rule i'll be specifying define compliance plans and com grades once i have com grades bundle all this together that makes com package so these are all the six six steps you know that you'll typically follow uh, whenever you're actually building a compensation structure in your organization if someone you know is asking if, if there is any acquisition you know, that has happened um, you know, for your company and uh, you need to define a, a new compensation structure for the new group of people who are part of uh, the acquisition for time being so for them you will be actually defining what are the frequencies you know that typically used for this um, calculations and once you have the frequencies you will be defining those compensation element uh, which will actually you know the, uh, uh, which that that particular element you know, will be actually the core element which will create a kind of a communication between uh, compensation and uh, payroll thing to uh, pass the data that is defined in compensation through the uh, payroll uh, which will actually um, uh, get a kind of you know pay deductions pay inputs whatever you know will be having as part of you know payroll so all those things you know will be happening actually so uh, the second step you will be actually combining some uh, combining uh, uh, compensation and payroll through compensation element actually so that your data will be flown accordingly so once you have that link created between uh, compensation and payroll you will be defining a compensation basis which will actually helpful for you in establishing uh, earnings for uh, different group of people and then in our compensation structure steps you know comes into picture eligibility rule grades plans and um, uh, you know uh, combining all this together to make a compensation package and uh, assign this to any of the team member as part of a merit plan bonus plan you know you'll be getting in our advanced compensation so you'll be assigning this entire compensation structure to that particular group of team members or individual employee or uh, you know uh, specific uh, uh, you know, member of that particular organization so you'll be assigning this entire compensation structure once you're ready to configure to employee profile while hiring actually that's how you know you typically follow actually and um, other than these um, conceptual things you know whatever we've discussed so far or like compensation um, uh, you know matrix or time period time proration and scorecards other than these you know conceptual things you know there are um, few basic terminologies actually so whenever you know you actually uh, uh, get certain skills in advanced compensation area so mostly you know you'll be talking um, uh, with these uh, terminologies in advanced compensation language one is so if you're aware of this one uh, you should be able to understand what uh, each uh, advanced compensation component performs and like that you know, you'll be able to uh, take some uh, you know decision related advanced compensation so the first one i can say configurable grid sorry configurable grid is nothing but a kind of you know reporting tool used by the planner compensation administrator or hr administrator and other security groups which makes awards you know and manage merit and bonus plan um, process actually so it's a kind of reporting tool used by comp administrator HR admin and uh, other uh, important security groups to make awards and manage
मेरिट बोनस ऑन स्टॉक प्लांट्स so the um, configur configurability is one of the you know frequently used a term in advanced compensation language what it does and you know what kind of uh, uh, security groups that will be part of uh, accessing this uh, con uh, configurable grid and the other one is controller have you heard uh, these terms uh, uh, in your um, current uh, uh, support activities what you be doing um, controller uh, grid kind of things and all uh, have you heard this thing i have heard uh, configurable grid not controller okay we talk about it but i don't think i have actually Mm -hmm. Okay, so the control is nothing but uh, no, mostly compensation administrator will be having access uh, to this one, which will be uh, performing a uh, kind of activity like controlling page uh, in their inbox, which provide complete view of the process, uh, um, complete view of the process uh, every time. So basically, you know, comp administrator will be actually performing this one, where um, comp admin will have access to this control page in their inbox, which provides a complete view of the process. Uh, you know, that is going on with that ad advanced compensation. So, basically, accessible by by comp admin, which provides uh, which which will provide permissions to control page in their inbox so controller is nothing but um, which is accessible by comp administrator uh, uh, which will provide specific permissions to control the page in their inbox uh, which provides complete view of the process uh, during this uh, uh, advanced compensation actually which provides complete view of the process and the other one is planner so planner uh, is one thing in you know, which you'll be frequently hearing in advanced compensation planner is nothing but uh, you know the, the individual who makes actual uh, compensation awards uh, individual can be manager compensation partner or any other you know um, defined security group who perform this activity okay person who makes comp awards could be uh, manager HR admin not HR admin comp admin comp admin and uh, any other security groups you know we can and any other security group which can be configured 